Alright guys, today I'm going to show you how to overclock your eMac. This is a generation 2 eMac with a 1 gigahertz processor and 768 megabytes of RAM. Um, I'm going to overclock it to 1.132 to be specific uh, gigahertz. And um, I'm taking this off of a guide online. I'll post it in the sidebar. Or it's over there. It's one, I don't know. But, um, alright. So, first off, we're going to begin just by uh, taking off the case. Um, if you've never done this before, use extreme caution. I'm not responsible. If you mess anything up, don't talk, like, you ask me questions. Don't blame me for your problems. Um, I've taken this EMAC e apart a few times already, and I've actually changed the resistors a, a little bit, the jumpers, to uh, change the hard drive, the speed, not the hard drive, whatever. Um, anyway, the point is just don't mess anything up, and don't be mad at me, okay? Um, so we're going to begin by taking the shell or the uh, housing off, whatever you want to call it. Just always use caution. Be careful of the power button. The other one actually broke my power button and had to uh, make an external one. So just be careful of the power button. Let's go. Alright, always make sure it's unplugged first. Hold down the power button for a second to drain any excess electricity you might have in there. Alright, turn around. Take off the back access door. Okay, all right, the excess door is off, all right. And while we still have our Phillips screwdriver out, we're gonna take off these two feet. Okay, foot one is off. Okay, I gotta lower that music for a minute. Huh, easiness. Okay. Alright, right now I have a number five metric uh, Allen wrench. Take off these right here. There's seven of them, so this might take me a minute. Um, one problem I've been experiencing with this EMAC, I don't know if it's my fault, uh, I actually got it from the school, um, they said it wasn't working right, it froze up all the time, so I'm assuming it's not my fault, but <clears throat> once I started overclocking it, uh, my original overclock was 1.266 gigahertz, then to 1.2, still froze, then to 1.33, it still froze, and, uh, now I'm back at 1, and I'm moving it up to 1.132, if that's what I said earlier. Um, Alright, this is the last one. Okay, sweet. Um, keep all your things in a little pile. Just set mine on the floor. Okay, now we're going to take the case. The power button, don't forget. I right, lift it up. About an inch or two, reach inside around the back and pull out the power button cable and just lift that sucker off. <sighs> okay, so there's the EMAC. Do not ever touch anything on this side of the EMAC, it can shock and kill you. Um, what I do is uh, I don't let myself touch anything on the other side of this little wall right here. So if you see it, um, the motherboard is right here, and this is all CRT stuff, so um, don't touch anything on the opposite side of that wall. It's just not safe. Alright, now we're going to take off this metal plate guard thing. There are four Phillips screws holding it in place. Separate your screw stack so that you don't get anything confused. I've done that. It was a mess. Okay. And screw four is out. All right, grab by these two handles. There are two little handles right here and right here. You'll see them. Grab and just pull off and up. All right. I'm gonna specifically just keep these four screws on there so I don't lose them. Ugh. All right, now I'm gonna do this a shortcut way because I don't feel like taking off the whole motherboard. I explained that in my hard drive one 
probably not up yet. I'm gonna remake it. Um, so I'm just gonna take off the seat, the combo drive instead. So I'm gonna start by pulling out the wire, the IDE wire. And if you don't know what any of this is, then you probably shouldn't be messing with your computer. Because you should probably know what that is if you're gonna take your computer apart and overclock. Um, by the way, also, I do have my soldering iron heating up right now. This is a 15 watt soldering iron. I believe. Yeah, 15 watt soldering iron. Um, you have to have one with a very fine tip because these things are like the size of sand grains. You're never gonna, like, get it if your soldering iron's too big. And don't try to use that whole cold heat crap. That stuff never works either. I've tried that. It doesn't work with this. Okay, so, um, I use a screwdriver to pry up this little power cable because it's, it's kind of really hard to pick up, usually. Just be careful not to bend or break the metal around it. Okay, very good. The drive is now totally unplugged. Make sure it's unplugged. And there are four screws on the side of it. Holding it in. I'm just going to take them out of the side and stick them in the bottom of the drive because they have little holes right there and I don't want to lose them. So. Alright, that was the last screw of the combo drive. I just took it out and stick it on. Alright, now this whole thing just slides out. Once again, make sure no wires are connected to it. Also, this is an easy way if you ever want to replace your drive. I'm considering that this one's kind of starting to go out. But, uh, I need to find a compatible one. Alright, I'm going to take you down here now. I'm going to pull the camera down here. Let's see. Oh shit, just wrench fell on the soldering iron, okay. Holy crap, I could swear that just burned my carpet. Okay. What is that? Okay, well, nothing seems. Oh man, it smells like hair burning. Alright, nothing seems too bad, so. We're just gonna continue. Okay, I can't. Hold on. Okay. I'm going to pretty much just position the